over the last few videos we've seen how we can add a model into a scene we've seen how we can put a wig on her head so she's got hair and we've also seen how we can clothe her and how we can also set the different textures and the different colorings of the various clothes and hair that we've added to her the follow-up video that we did to that is we added lights into a scene so that we're able to light up that scene in the way that we wanted so that we can actually see our model in all her glory well what we're going to do in this video is we're going to be taking a look at the basic render settings that we need and then rendering out a final image so what we have over here is our model she's already in scene she's all dressed up and she's got hair on her head as she should and she's striking a very suitable pose uh, ready to be rendered out i've also got the lighting set up here we're, we're, you know we've dealt with basic lighting previously i've got the lighting set up here and i've just created this little studio environment for it to take place in so what we need to do first of all is we need to come across and take a look at our render settings and we give that a click now incidentally if you don't have the render settings tab over here you should do i think in your base uh, default setup within DAS. but if you don't don't worry all you need to do is just come up to the window at the top of uh at the top of DAS here this menu selection give it a click come into panes and tabs and then if you come down wherever it is there it is we give that a click and it would create the render tab for you you might have to drag it into uh, its relevant place uh, as we've shown in a previous video which you'll be able to see up in the right hand top of the corner uh, but once you've got that and you've got it all set up you will see the render settings as we've got here now on this general mini tab this general sub tab that we've got we only need a few things that, on here that are really important all we really need to look at in this video is this little top section right here uh, the dimension preset the pixel size and the aspect ratio i'll deal with these last two first well in fact i'll deal with the last one first the aspect ratio now if we were to have a quick look over here in the viewport you can see this white bounding box that's there in our scene if you don't see it incidentally if you come up to this little uh menu option here which is like four arrows and a uh, sorry four lines and a triangle and give it a click you'll see something there called show aspect for uh, frame and what you need to do is make sure that that's ticked if it's not ticked you'll see something like that where the bounding box has gone but once it's ticked you'll see this white bounding box around where our model is sitting now what this represents is is everything within that box is going to get rendered out when we click render up there uh and this shape this you know which is the 16 by 9 shape which you can also see there in the top left hand corner that is going to be the final shape of our render when when the the render engine starts to do its stuff it's going to come out in that shape that we've got set if we wanted to change that shape there's two ways that we can do it we can come into you know where we've got width and height and we can just type any numbers in there we can put a one in there and we can put a one in there and now what we get because it's a one-to-one -one ratio we end up with a square and again everything that's within that square is going to get rendered when we render it out everything outside the square is not going to get rendered and our final image is going to be in this shape as a square the second way that we can change the aspect ratio is to come up to this dimension preset which you get here and we can give it a click we'll see a list of preset aspect ratios that we can set which are all fairly standard shapes and fairly standard ratios that we can get you can see there that i've hovered over square which is one you know an aspect ratio of one to one which is what we've currently got and if we come back up here you can see here we've got full hd the 16.9 that it was originally set in and just up above it you can see the the 16.9 but also the 4k version which is the the version i originally had set right at the beginning so if i give that a click you can see we go back into the 16.9 aspect ratio and we can see as we now move on to resolution that our resolution has been set at 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels over there that's 3840 pixels that way and 2160 pixels that way and that is the dimension and the resolution that the render engine will attempt or will render out our final image when we click render now if you want to change the the resolution of the image the final image that's going to get rendered out all it is it's just a matter of changing the numbers that you can see in pixel size there uh, if we wanted to go to a standard hd image rather than the 4k image that we've got all i have to do is put in 1080 into the height now if you look at the width there when i press enter the width will automatically change to give me because what's happening is that it's trying to maintain this 16 by 9 
uh, re aspect ratio that we've got. So if we only have to change one of these uh, numbers and the other number will automatically calculate, which is great because it saves us having to do math in our own heads. Uh, so if I go back to 2160, you'll see again it will change and it'll go back to a full standard 4K resolution because it's maintaining this aspect ratio. And the same is true if you add any number in. If we come across to the width over here and we put, say, 500 in there, you can see that the height changes as it tries to maintain or it will maintain this 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And that will be true no matter what the aspect ratio is. It will always try to marry it up so that uh, if you're in 1 to 1, for instance, and we put 500 in there, it will automatically calculate the height to be 500. Now, a little word of warning when it comes to resolution. The bigger the resolution, the more detailed your image and the longer it's going to take to render out. So just bear that in mind when you're playing with resolutions that if you wanted to do something really high resolution, it's going to take a long, long time to render. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the aspect ratio. I'm going to change it to something that's a bit more practical when you're posting images on, say, for instance, you, you post at the galleries in social media sites, etc., etc. I'm going to change it to something that I just normally use, which is a width of 10 and a height of 13. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the resolution. So again, it's in 4K. I'll do 2160. But this time, because it's trying to maintain this new aspect ratio, the width will be calculated to be 1662. Is that, yeah? Uh, we've changed the resolution. We've changed the aspect ratio. The bound and box will now represent everything that's going to get rendered in our final image. Now there's one other subhead over here on the render settings that, that's important and that we need to have a look at. And that is this progressive rendering that you can see there that's third down from the top. This might look a little bit complicated if it's the first time you've really had a look at it, but don't worry, it's not. All that this is doing is it's setting the criteria that the render engine uses to determine when it's, when it's finished, basically, when the render's finished. Now this is important because uh, if we'd ever had any of this set and this, the render would just go on for absolutely ever so we need to set the conditions and the criteria that the render engine uses for it to stop now there are three important parts here that we need to look at that is this max samples here there is the max time which is the one just below and then the other is is this rendering convergence ratio it also works in conjunction with this rendering quality but the main one is this rendering converged ratio now, when we start to render, the render engine is going to be constantly monitoring the criteria that we've got set up here in these sliders. So, for instance, if we reach 5,000 samples, the render engine is going to stop uh, and it's going to say, right, everything's done, everything's five, we've hit that number. But what is a sample? Uh, well, you might also hear it called an iteration at times. When the render engine has completed a series of calculations and updated the image, that is considered to be one iteration, or in this case, as it's saying there, one sample. Uh, and it will then move on to the next set of calculations, updating and improving the original image that it had done in iteration one. And it will go on and on and on and do this. Now, once it hits uh, 5,000 samples, it's going to stop. It's going to end the, the render and it's going to stop because we've hit the number that we have in this criteria or in this you know slider here. Likewise, the same is true with time. Uh, this number here represents seconds, uh, 7,200 seconds or two hours. So when it hits that time limit, the render engine is going to stop. Uh, the render and converge ratio down here is a little bit more difficult to grasp, but in simple terms, uh, the render engine is going to constantly calculate how close it thinks the image is to being considered done, uh, to being finished. Uh, now, by default, when it thinks that it's 95% done, the render engine is going to stop and everything's going to end. Now, the render engine only needs one of these criteria to be met and the rendering will be stopped. We might hit 5,000 samples, for instance, in 20 minutes, but the render engine will stop. Likewise, uh, we might render for two hours, but only do 1,000 samples. But because we've hit the two-hour two hour time limit, the render engine is going to stop at that point. Uh, and likewise, we might hit this 95% uh, converge ratio in 1,000 samples in 10 minutes, but the render engine is going to stop at that point. What should you set these to? Well, I'm sorry to say, I'm going to say it depends. Uh, there's a whole load of little factors that come into play when you're deciding these things. That could be uh, the, the performance and the speed of your graphics card. It could be the scene itself, whether it's an indoor scene or an outdoor scene with a lot of open areas. 
uh, how much light is in the scene. Uh, lots of little different factors that come into it, and I would probably say it's experience in truth. To begin with, I would stick to the defaults uh, and then just see how things go and, and just learn you know, which numbers are going to be best into these numbers as you go on. Uh, what I tend to do is that I tend to put the max samples here up to 15,000 to begin with. Uh, and I'll tend then to put the ratio itself up to 99%. And then I'll set the render off and then I'll just judge for myself as, as to whether or not it's done by looking at the quality of the, the render as it's being done. One thing I should note here about the render and converge ratio, this is just a personal opinion. I think the render engine's interpretation of what is 95% done is questionable at times. Uh, this is why I tend to put it up to 99% or even at times 100% it'll never get to 100% by the way uh, I think at times it's questionable because at times it can say it's 95% done but when you look at the image you can still see that it's grainy and you can still see there's a lot of noise in there now one thing to bear in mind and we did mention earlier there about graphics cards if you've got a really slow graphics card a really low level graphics card you're going to take a lot of time rendering and you're never really going to get a high quality image uh, if you've got a really powerful graphics card you can afford to push these numbers further up i, I run on a 4090 graphics card an nvidia 4090 graphics card i will probably do these 15,000 samples in this scene in about 10 minutes i would possibly say uh, if you've got a low-end graphics card the same scene could take you 10 hours so there's a lot of factors that come into play. Go with the defaults to begin with and see where you end up. So for the basic render settings, them are the only two things really that you need to look at. Everything else in this list is a little bit more complicated and we will get onto that into later videos. But if you just want to get a simple render done, you've got a character in a scene, all you need to look at are the general tabs on there, setting your resolution and the, the aspect ratio of your image, and then just determining how long that the, the image is going to render for. And once you're done, once you've got all that set up and you're happy with things, all you need to do is just hit this big blue button up the top that says render or likewise you can come up into uh, the menu up here and you can see there render likewise there's a little icon there also which you can give that a click and it will render out the scene and then sit and wait and see your creation come to life uh thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye bye now